Are you also wondering if Buffett's stake in the oil and gas sector is paying off? Warren Buffett keeps increasing the amount of money he puts into oil companies. Why is that so? Let's learn more about it in depth. Don't forget to subscribe to Wealth Dynamics to keep yourself updated with the latest happening and insights of the finance world. After purchasing roughly 3.7 million more shares, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway Inc. increased its holding in Occidental Petroleum Corp. to about 23.6%. The acquisitions, which cost around $216 million and took place on March 23 and 27, were revealed by Berkshire on Monday night in a filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Buffett's company purchased significant amounts of Occidental stock when Russia invaded Ukraine. This month alone, the company has spent more than $1 billion on the store. Based on the oil company's Monday closing price of $59.65, it currently owns around 211.7 million Occidental shares, valued at $12.6 billion. The U.S. Federal Energy Regulatory Commission granted Berkshire approval to purchase up to 50% of Occidental's ordinary stock in August. It also has warrants to purchase an additional $5 billion of ordinary shares for $59.62 per share, and $10 billion of Occidental preferred stock with an 8% dividend. As Occidental's largest stakeholder, Berkshire has been rumored to acquire the Houston-based business by analysts and investors eventually. The BNSF Railway and Geico Car Insurance are just two of the many companies that Buffett, 92, S. Conglomerate, located in Omaha, Nebraska, operates. Before investing $26.5 billion in the remaining shares of BNSF in 2010, Berkshire had acquired a 22.6% stake in the company. Berkshire Hathaway, led by Warren Buffett, has increased its stake in Occidental Petroleum, a producer of crude oil. The most recent acquisitions have increased Berkshire's business ownership to 22.2%. Regulators have permitted Berkshire to purchase up to 50% of the oil company's outstanding shares. According to regulatory documents, Berkshire Hathaway paid $355 million for an additional 5.8 million shares of Occidental Petroleum. In turn, the company's ownership of oil production climbed from 21.4% to 22.2%. Almost 200 million shares, valued at $12.2 billion, are currently owned by Berkshire. At 3.7% of its portfolio, it ranks Berkshire's seventh largest position. Over a relatively short period, Buffett's company has built a sizable interest in the oil company. Around a year ago, Berkshire began purchasing shares. Just five months after the company's acquisition hiatus, Berkshire has resumed its buying spree. The price of crude is the main driving force behind Berkshire's investment in Occidental Petroleum and rival oil company Chevron. Although the cost of crude oil has decreased recently, coinciding with Berkshire's purchase halt, it will surely rise again this summer. According to the International Energy Agency, this year's oil demand will reach a record high of 101.9 million daily barrels. According to the IEA, a significant factor is a recovery in the Chinese market. Also, as international travel returns to pre-pandemic levels, demand for jet fuel should increase. The IEA predicts a limited supply this year. Due to the effect of the restrictions on Russian supply, it only projects an increase in output of 1.2 million BPD. The IEA concludes that demand may exceed supply in the second part of the year. Due to this view, several businesses predict that oil prices could reach $100 per barrel this summer. Occidental Petroleum might generate greater free cash flow if oil prices rose. The business would then have more money to distribute to shareholders. Another 38% recently increased the dividend payment from Occidental, and a new $3 billion share repurchase program was also introduced. These increasing cash returns put Occidental Petroleum in an excellent position to begin redeeming Berkshire's investment in the business as preferred shares. As the oil business pays Buffett's company $800 million yearly on that $10 billion investment used to fund its 2019 acquisition of Anadarko Petroleum, doing so would result in financial savings for the oil company. 
while Berkshire's dividend income would be impacted in the short term by the redemption of its preferred stock investment, it would increase its available cash for future investments. Oil prices heavily influence the near-term performance of Berkshire's interests in Occidental Petroleum and Chevron. Both businesses also have potential important long-term catalysts. They are fast becoming market leaders in carbon capture and sequestration. According to Occidental Petroleum, the global market for CCS might reach $3 trillion to $5 trillion in the next few years. As a result, the business may one day generate as much revenue from services related to decarbonization as it does from oil and gas production. The first of much direct air capture projects being built by Occidental will take atmospheric carbon dioxide and store it underground. The first project is expected to be finished by the middle of 2025, despite inflation-related cost hikes and other delays. The commercial viability of the technique must be demonstrated. Occidental is also constructing several sequestration centers across the nation. Occidental Petroleum stock continues to be purchased by Berkshire Hathaway. The near-term upside potential in crude prices, which could result from demand later this year growing more quickly than supply, is a significant driver. In the meantime, Occidental CCS investments could be an effective long-term upside catalyst. So, assuming those events materialize as anticipated, Buffett's investment in Occidental might continue to yield a profit. The Occidental Petroleum Company stock purchase by Warren Buffett's fund was widely reported in the media last year. Nonetheless, it should be noted that Berkshire Hathaway Incorporated began holding shares of this business in its portfolio in 2019. The shares of Occidental Petroleum made up 0.5% of the fund at the time and 0.6% in 2020. In Q1 2022, Berkshire Hathaway paid 7.7 million US dollars for shares of Occidental Petroleum. In Q2, the company bought more stock for 9.3 million US dollars, bringing the total to 6.3%. Let's talk about Halliburton Company. The Halliburton Corporation assists businesses in the oil and gas industry. Due to the concurrently rising demand for the equipment the issuer supplies, the rise in the number of drilling rigs around the world positively impacts the issuer's income. The report for Q3, 2022, released on October 25, confirms this. The Halliburton Company's Q3 revenue of $5.4 billion US dollars, or 29% greater than the Q3 of 2021, exceeded expert predictions, and the EPS rocketed by 130.8% to zero US dollars and 60 cents. The company's shares began to rise one month before the report, with the solid quarterly performance accelerating the movement. As a result, Halliburton Corporation saw growth of 56% over the preceding month and 66% over the year. Let's talk about Valero Energy Corporation. The U.S. experienced an unprecedented rise in fuel costs last summer. The profitability of oil and gas companies, such as Valero Energy Corporation, which manufactures and markets petrochemical goods and transportation fuel, is significantly impacted by high petrol and diesel costs. The company released its encouraging third quarter 2022 results on October 25. Revenue climbed by 24% to $44.45 million U.S. dollars, and EPS soared by 580% to $7.14. US the shares of Valero Energy Corporation have increased by 80% since the start of the year, and at the time this piece was being written, they were trading at record highs. Let's now talk about Hess Corporation. Most businesses that directly mine and produce crude oil products will deliver quarterly reports in November, though some, like the Hess Corporation, have already done so. Moving on. The ongoing energy crisis suggests that crude oil prices will either stay the same or increase. OPEC Plus substantially reduces production supply to raise oil prices since doing so is in its best interest. To continue exporting crude oil from reserves, the U.S. is attempting to foster market conditions that will cause prices to decline. The crude oil reserves have already dropped to where they were in 1984 as a result of this. The number of drilling mills in the U.S. is not growing simultaneously. 
Analysts predict that after the Senate elections, sales from the reserves will cease, which would unavoidably affect the price of crude oil. As a result, the issue will only worsen because the US will need to replenish its depleted stockpiles, which would increase market demand overall and demand from the US government. It should not be forgotten that the central banks of industrialized nations are slowing the global economy by raising interest rates to combat inflation. Since many businesses have closed due to the EU's energy crisis, there is a corresponding decline in demand for crude oil. Under such conditions, crude oil prices could decline, and oil-producing companies would likely be on the verge of returning to profitability. With the 2008 financial crisis, the price of black gold began to soar. By 2010, it had risen by more than 100 US dollars per barrel. The price remained there until 2014, when it started to decline. Oil production corporations have taken note of their mistakes. After the COVID-19 crisis a few years ago, the number of drilling rigs has not increased and is twice as low as in 2019. It can be assumed that the sector's representatives are not eager to enhance hydrocarbon output to keep the supply low. It will be challenging for oil prices to fall below their current levels in these conditions. Oil production corporations have shown the most robust performance growth compared to stock indexes and other economic sectors since the start of the year. If these dynamics hold up over time, it will be evident. If hydrocarbons remain pricey, oil corporations can continue paying dividends and boost funding for stock buybacks. Warren Buffett is reaping the benefits of his investment in oil and gas firms, proving that he truly is the oracle of Omaha. That is all for this video. We will be back soon with another informative video. Don't forget to like and share this video. Until next time.